Geek Television is brought to you by Columbia's Omni Heat. Keep your warmth, not your sweat. Mila, making premium German appliances since 1899. And by Ski Vermont, winter in its original state. This week, it's all things Scottish on snow. On the freestyle file, World Cup winning high flying Olivier Rochon. And Josh Foster helps us with our bump skiing. My adventure this week takes me to a place that I've always wanted to visit but never dreamed that I would be on assignment to ski. I've hooked up with my good friend Bruce who has been instrumental in coordinating this unique trip. This week's show has us exploring skiing in Scotland. Scotland is certainly a unique place to ski and it offers some of the most spectacular scenery anywhere in Europe. In fact, there are several world-class ski resorts in Scotland. In the west, you'll find Scotland's oldest ski resort, Glencoe, which opened in 1956. And just up the road is the Nevis Range, which boasts a 3,900-foot vertical. Moving east to the Scottish Highlands, Cairngorm, the Lecht, and Scotland's largest ski resort, Glenshee, offer a wide variety of slopes, world-class amenities, and Scottish hospitality. So Bruce Simpson and I met about four months ago at Sun Peaks where I was coaching a race camp and he kept talking about Scotland and how great it was and um, convinced us to come here. So here we are four months later um, in a pub in Scotland exploring the skiing. What's so great about the skiing here? Well, skiing in Scotland began a long time ago. The whole country was under glaciers until about 10,000 years ago. Wow. So our early ancestors had loads of snow and ice to, to start on. I'll bet. And then it was officially developed in about 1880s, and they used these seven and a half uh, feet long ash skis. Wow. Uh, developed the first ski lifts in the 1950s, Glencoe over here in the west, along with uh, in Nevis Range or in the western part of Scotland. And then in the northeast, we've got the Cairngorms, which have a funicular railway. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lech and also Glen Sheet. That's great, and I, you know, I understand that, you know, the weather can be a little touch and go every now and again. So you've definitely got some different facilities when the weather does kind of come in. A dry ski slope in Edinburgh and Glasgow is you can ski all year long on brushes, and then an right. indoor ski slope called Snow Zone in Glasgow, in the middle of Glasgow, a 1,000 foot long snow slope, which is just amazing. So we can ski all year, we're crazy about it. <laughs> you guys really are crazy about it. We're always looking for places where there's no wind, because the average wind speed is about 40 miles per hour across the top right. of the hills here. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for the corries or the gullies to ski down the back of some of these, some of these crests. And there, the, the skiing's amazing. All the way down to the sea, up to 4,000 feet vertical drop, amazing. Well, it all sounds really exciting, and I'm really looking forward to discovering the ski culture here in Scotland. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Pleasure. We arrived late in the ski season and as luck would have it, our first day of skiing in Scotland was washed out by torrential rains. Water, water everywhere. Fortunately though, we found refuge in a classic old inn. This is the Clackeg Inn, a typical place that you may find on your visit to the Glencoe and Ben Nevis area. Now one of the things that's really surprised me are all of the mountaineering and skiing artifacts that you can find within the walls of a place like this. Now I hadn't really expected to find such a rich alpine culture here in Scotland. And a great example of that alpine spirit is right here. Just a few miles down the road from Glencoe is the seaside town called Kinloch Leven. And this is the ice factor. It's got the world's largest indoor ice climbing facility. The ice factor has been opened uh, just over seven years now. Uh, we hold the world's biggest indoor ice wall. We also have Europe's largest articulated rock wall, uh, climbing features, bouldering area, and an aerial adventure course. 
Uh, the ice wall is incredibly imp uh, popular. We have uh, guides from throughout the, the UK bringing their clients to us, as well as mum, dad and children coming uh, to, to visit us. We see roughly 130,000 visitors per year coming to the Ice Factor uh, for a range of activities that we have here. Loch Aber is known as uh, the UK's outdoor capital, uh, which is why the Ice Factor is sited here. We are the heartland of many uh, climbers, walkers, cyclists, skiers, extreme sports enthusiasts, and we're the, the epicentre of uh, family activities in, the, in Scotland. After it was shut down, this aluminum smelter was one of the most polluted sites in Europe. After a very arduous process and absolute dedication and vision by JV and Tracy, it was cleaned up and has since received one of Europe's top environmental awards. The enthusiasm and passion that the Scottish people have for outdoor adventure is absolutely contagious. This has been a real treat. Coming up, the old country's world-class ski experience. I did not expect this. Like, I've been telling you that this is it. You know, the, the skiing here is amazing. A three and a half thousand feet of vertical drop. Wow. And where can you get that in many places? Yeah. Good snow, great spring skiing. We're going to head up to the White Lady up here, and, and there's about 20 or so lifts on three different valleys that we can ski. That's great. I'm still looking forward to it. It's magic. This Swiss-designed funicular takes skiers from the parking lot to the top station at Cairngorm Mountain. It is springtime in Scotland and since our arrival, we've been fighting high winds and rain. Today we got a break and Bruce and I were able to head up the hill for some turns in the Scottish Highlands. I grew up here, skied here for probably 47 years and I've always loved to ski. The, 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 the bumps, the big bumps in the spring down the White Lady are fantastic. Some of the couloirs, the corries coming off the west wall and the east wall are just fantastic. Uh, the snow fences hold the snow until quite late in the season. And, uh, and the skiing's great. We're a bit windy up top, but you can always find a, a sheltered spot to come down and look for the haggises and do some deep header uh, skiing just before you get back to the car. Impressions of people that have brought you. First of all, they're amazed at the funicular railway. Why would we have a funicular railway in Scotland, uh, which you'd expect to have in the Alps? And uh, so that's a, that's a surprise. People are amazed at the vertical drop, about three and a half thousand feet vertical drop down into the valley. Uh, they're amazed at the, at the gullies and the steepness of them. And they just love the hot chocolates in the restaurant at the top. The best I've ever had with, with marshmallows and the best cream. Yeah, it's, it's a very active lifestyle here. The, a lot of the older folks come up here, we call them the Jerry Actives because there's so much to do. And they get out there mountain biking, uh, canoeing down the Spey, which is fantastic, with visiting the distilleries, many distilleries up here in the Spey Valley, uh, rock climbing, hill walking, uh, whiskey tasting, all sorts of stuff to do uh, in addition to, to the skiing. So you'll ski in the morning and do those great things in the, in the afternoon. After some skiing up at Cairngorm Mountain this morning, I'm back down here in the Glen for some canoeing. Yeah, Dave operates some tours that I hear are really unique. So Dave, what makes your tours so special? Well, the, uh, the Spey is an iconic river in Scotland and uh, it's one of the most toured rivers by canoeists. Uh, there's nothing too hard in terms of grading uh, and so it's very picturesque, very beautiful. Uh, and uh, it just got uh, such a wonderful ambience. And as far as I'm concerned, um, 
it's steeped in history uh, and uh, people often say that I elicit a spirit from the river by talking uh, um, through my stories uh, because, because there's so much history there are so many stories to tell. Also lots of distilleries along the river as well so as well as eliciting a spirit from my stories then obviously there's a tying in with the spirit on the, uh, on the, on the distilleries as well. So on quite a few of my trips we actually managed to to do some distillery visits and uh, give people a taste of the lovely peaty water. After our magical paddle down the River Spey, we pulled the boats out of the water and were surprised to find a teepee on the riverbank. Earlier in the day, David had set this all up for us, complete with a whiskey tasting. He sure hasn't missed one detail in creating a very memorable and truly Scottish experience. <laughs> The Freestyle File, in partnership with Columbia, proud supporter of the Canadian Freestyle Ski Team and its athletes. Hi, my name is Olivier Rachon. I'm 23 years old. I've been doing aerial skiing for the past seven years, and I grew up skiing in Camp Fortune, Gatineau. After being a gymnast for 11 years and a mogul skier for eight, I really wanted to try something new. Uh, I was at the point where I need to choose between gymnastics and skiing. Nicholas Fontaine asked me to try out the water ramps the first year that they got built, so I went and I just loved it from the first day on. The thing I'm, I'm the most proud of uh, would be um, coming back after my year off and winning the Crystal Globe because, you know, before my year off, I was immature and you know aerials was more of a, of a fun thing I think I was uh, I had in mind and it just made me realize that it's my job. We were all recruited from uh, gymnastics, trampoline and circus athletes and the funny thing is that everybody that got recruited we all kind of knew each other from the sport so it was we were already friends so we just became a, a family over the years. Uh, I think the hardest thing about aerials is really staying focused when you uh, when you're when you're jumping because it's it's very easy to go off track and then you can hesitate or uh, not be focused enough and just miss your jump. I love making people laugh. My favorite thing to do when I'm not jumping, um, I gotta say, it's going to the dog park with my dog. <laughs> Seeing her play with other dogs, it might seem a bit uh, a bit funny that I say this, but it's I, I love animals so. Coming in this season. Uh, I'm at the top and I know when you're at the top people want to take you down. I have two new jumps, double full, 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 so it's a double in. Uh, and the other one is full, full, double full. So it's two new jumps with four twists, two quads. I've been doing the same jumps for the past three or four years. So I think it's a big step in my career, uh, technically and mentally. So we'll see how it goes. Coming up, a family of Scottish legends. Now it's time for this week's web poll. If you could only pick one discipline to watch at the 2014 Olympics, which would it be? A, downhill and super G. B, ski cross. C, moguls. D, aerials. E, slope style and half pipe. Or F, slalom and giant slalom. Log on to snowsportsculture.com today and take the poll. Bruce's mother and father are legends in the skiing and mountaineering community here in Scotland. Bruce invited us to his parents' home near Cairngorm Mountain to learn about his family's accomplishments. So Bruce sent me this book um, after we had met and um, there's a lot of significance to this book uh, for him and for us being here in Scotland. His mother wrote the book and it tells of the early days of skiing in Scotland. Your mom's a real adventurer, so is your dad. Tell us a bit about that and how that kind of ties into the ski culture here. Well, my dad lived in the Antarctic for three years and lived, mm -hmm. spent most of that time on skis at a British base down there. And mum was a climber and used skis for access to, to climbing routes. And, and, and the two of them just loved there for the same thing. When they got married, they then did various trips on skis. Uh, crossing Greenland was one trip in the 60s, and then a trip to the North Pole as well, cross-country skiing from the northern point of Canada. Right. 
Yeah, the stories are absolutely phenomenal. I can't believe the, um, the raw adventure that, uh, that your parents and you as a result were sort of exposed to at an early age. Where did you, um, where did you grow up? So I grew up in Glasgow, in Scotland, okay. and we would go to Glencoe every weekend, and we would camp and then walk up and ski down in the, you know, in the interesting Scottish weather. Yes. Uh, but then living in different places uh, in the world, with my, my parents would just take the kids along. So we'd be on the back of the sledge, or we'd be skiing behind trying to keep up as they were doing their fantastic ex expeditions. Right. So that, that gave us a chance to spend uh, you know, moments of childhood in the north of Canada or in Greenland, which is something that's a very strong part of my, my heritage. And then you went on to become quite an accomplished skier as well. Well, we all raced. My brothers and sisters all raced. We're very competitive, and so we raced on the, the Scottish the Scottish team. Right. And then I raced on the British team after that too for a while. Yeah. Uh, and then picked it up again when I moved to Canada a few years ago to pick up on the master circuit. And then you came and trained with me. And then I came and trained with you. <laughs> and now a whole new renaissance of my skiing. Is That's great. And you won the club championships. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, coach. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. As we were driving through the Scottish countryside, Bruce told me about a chap named Mick Ty, who has been collecting skiing and mountaineering artifacts for years. With the rich history of skiing in Scotland, we thought it would be interesting to meet him. How did you get saddled with the responsibilities of becoming a collector and a ski historian, really? Well, I think it probably goes back to my uh, Irish background. I call them Irish tinkers, where we kind of uh, kind of like to collect things together, a bit like right. a magpie, you know. <laughs> so I started collecting things uh, personally in my own collection and then ultimately we've made this now into a charity and uh, got all our equipment on a website, hopefully the dream in a museum and what you see here is what we've got. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. What a treat it is to meet a person so passionate about outdoor adventure. Although he has been shouldered with the responsibility of preserving the history of mountain culture in this area, Mick does it with a deep personal interest that is a benefit to people today and future generations to come. Although the Nevis Ski Area is quite new by all ski resort standards, this here, the Ben Nevis Inn, is a really old building. It was a barn and it's been repurposed into this amazing restaurant. And from here you can hike up into the Nevis Range. Well tonight, when I walked into this building, it was one of those breathtaking moments. You know, all the long tables that sort of spoke of togethering and the music in the background. I mean, it's really sort of one of those magical moments that just stays right there for a really long time. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about some tactics to master the moguls. Stick around. Ski Tips with Josh Foster. Sponsored by Canada's favorite family ski resort, Big White, in the Thompson Okanagan near Kelowna, BC. Well, it's an awesome sunny day here. Doing a little bump skiing over on Dragon's Tongue. It's one of my favorite things to do in the spring, you know. And one of the things that I like to think of when I'm skiing the bumps is not so much the technical side of skiing, a little bit more the tactical side of skiing. And I'm going to show you a few little pointers here today that might help you improve your bump skiing. So come on with me and we'll give it a shot. Here we go. So I think the tactical elements of bump skiing, well there's speed for sure, you want to be able to control that, then there's turn shape, and then there's line. Those are the three tactics I think of. So I want to get a good handle on those three tactics. Otherwise, things can get a little bit hectic here in the bumps. You know, a lot of times the terrain can toss you around and the terrain sort of dictates where you end up. But if you can manage line, speed, and turn shape, you're all good. So if I can manage my line, well, that's gonna help me control my speed. And to control both of those, I need to think of my turn shape itself. So basically what I mean by turn shape is how round 
is your turn. That's what's going to help dictate your speed. It's also going to help you choose your line. Come on with me here and I'll show you what I mean. So check this out. Uh, take the opportunity to these flats before I get into the bumps to set my turn shape, my speed, and my line. I'm just going to carry that all the way into the bumps as if they're not even here. So I keep that round turn shape going. That gives me that control that I'm looking for. Helps me manage my speed and helps me manage my line. You know, if you don't have that line in mind, what you're going to end up doing is skiing all over the run, doing what we call shopping for the bumps. When you go shopping for bumps, the speed picks up and you end up out of control. So set your speed, set your line, set your turn shape before you get into the run. So once I set that speed and that turn shape that I'm comfortable with, I can use that all the way down the run and I'm skiing this run as if there isn't even any bumps right there. You know, they're kind of like the elephant in the room, hey? It's pretty hard to avoid them, but if you go shopping around for them, that's when things get out of control, they get a little bit fast. So set your speed, set your turn shape, set your line before you get into the bumps. From beautiful Big White Ski Resort, Canada's favorite family resort, just outside Kelowna, British Columbia, I'm Josh. We'll see you next time. Urquhart Castle is one of the most famous ancient castles in Scotland. It overlooks Loch Ness, the lake where the fabled monster Nessie lives. So whether you believe in Nessie or not, believe this, there is skiing in Scotland, and as my good friend Bruce likes to say, it's not crap. No, it's Gallus. Gallus. <laughs> That's the new word. <laughs> hey, Bruce, thanks so much for your hospitality. We've had a great, great time. But that's all the time we have for the show this week. I'm Edith Rosa, looking for Nessie. <laughs> Ski Television has been brought to you by Columbia's Omni Heat. Keep your warmth, not your sweat. Mila, making premium German appliances since 1899. And by Bollet. If you never try, you'll never see. <laughs>